attack the basket. James catches, puts up the three. Won't go. Rebound box. Back out to Allen. His three point of bang. Welcome to the Ultimate Super Coach and Fantasy Sports Show. You are now listening to the Insight Fantasy Sports Podcast. Boom shakalaka! Hello and welcome to the Insight Podcast Network MBA. Uh, here with me today, I've got Robbie K. And I am the Supercoach Matrix, or in this case, the MBA Matrix. And um, I was out there, I suppose, with the All Abilities Touch Football team. Uh, shout out to the Raiders from up in Toowoomba Touch. And uh, come up with a little, uh, we had a win today too. Uh, come up with a little idea that we could do a selection between 1 and 20, 21 and 40, 41 and 60. And uh, Rob and I play a little bit of a game where we select a starting five with three subs at the end, and we will put out on socials some polls and see who comes up with the best team. Now, the rules are you're allowed one rejection, uh, which is like a big size block, in which case that player gets taken off the board completely and um, cannot be drafted by the next person. We're going to flip a coin at the beginning, um, heads or tails, as to who gets, I suppose, the first draft pick. And, um, yeah, let's see how the team goes. How are you today, Rob? I'm good. I'm ready to go. Like, mate, as you said, you gave me a call halfway through today. It's probably about two hours ago. There's been no prep. I've been I've been knocking back a few standard squeezes with my mate whilst I watch uh, Fremantle get a big win against Geelong. I'm about three standard squeezes deep. Big shout out to the standard squeeze. Um, done no prep. I love how you pulled in the one guy who's probably the noobest out of us all. Like you can tell anyone who's watching this on YouTube right now, you can see NBA Matrix versus Rob Kennedy. It's like <laughs> I'm the guy that runs into the 2K wreck, still in the standard clothes and thinking I'm just going to start to tear it up. But look, we'll see how we go. I'm not feeling confident, but uh, it should be a lot of fun. Mate, I've played in some cons with you and you've done very well. I know we've had some some big chats in the past about some mm -hmm. drafting and I suppose our theories behind drafting. This would be yeah. really, I suppose, relevant in those 20 man leagues. And we've played in the in the ball page leagues with our great friend Carl Moore. Um, and it, yeah, it's just gonna be really relevant there. But today it's all about a bit of fun. Um, we're gonna base everything on the normal standard nine cats which yep. is field goal percentage, free throw percentage, three-pointers made, rebounds, assists, steals, blocks, turnovers, and points. Cool. And we're um, going to run off. So we're running off ADP from last year. So what the ADP? So obviously there's no rookies. So we've got no rookies to pick from. We're going off ADP of last year. And we're using Fantasy Sport Pros, which is a bit of a, a mixture of you know, ESPN and uh, Yahoo and all the likes are in there. So if anybody wants to check out what we're picking from, we'll probably give you a quick rundown of the players, maybe who we are picking from, and then we'll uh, we'll go from there. I'm feeling good in the early rounds. I think I'll be okay. I start looking down at some of the later numbers between 100 and 120 and 120 and 140. And uh, look, I might just start picking a couple of my favorite players just so I feel good about my side, mate. We'll see how we go. Sounds good. Caruso incoming. Um, heads or tails? Heads or Tails never fails, mate. Let's go. I've got the first pick. Oof. 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 That hurts me on so many levels for one piece of research that I did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take Joel Embiid with the first pick. I see what Look, you're doing. Um, I can, I can you, see what you were doing. <laughs> Joel Embiid was, uh, was the number one ranked player last year. Um, just a just a really good player. Um, had averages of 33 points, 10 rebounds, four assists, one steal, and 1.7 blocks. Did get a lot of turnovers uh, for a center, so I might find myself um, struggling there in turnovers a little bit. But if we're taking the number one ranked player, I'm happy to take him um, as long as I don't get rejected here with my uh, with my first draft pick. I will be adding Joel Embiid into my team. 
you're not getting rejected because I know exactly what you're doing. And you say this is all for fun, but you've already started off with bullshit games. And there's a part of me that freaking loves it. Well done. Well done. Mate, it, I have to then. I have to play this card. It's a no-brainer. I have to go with Nikola Jokic, who I think is Boom, by far. Who's the number one player by Boom, far. Boom, Yeah, we're talking about someone 63% field goal, 82% free throw, nearly a three-pointer a game, 24 points, 11, 12 rebounds, 10 assists. He's a walking triple-double. No-brainer. He's the number one pick in every draft. You're just playing games. Like my wife always says, not tonight. Like my wife. Yeah, yeah, no. So that's so that's my number one rejection. So um, I hate look, you. Mate, um, you can you can keep one on the on the board there. Uh, Nikola Jokic is off the board. I have used my rejection extremely early in there. Um, mm. To me, that there was clear two number ones. I would yep. have been extremely happy with. Uh, Nikola Jokic or Joel Embiid, and I was always using my rejection in the first round. So I'm keen to see how you pivot, mate. Yeah, I really don't like it. I think for me it was Jokic or Embiid was where I was going to go. Um, they were sort of the picks for me. I don't love this pick, but I think this guy will bounce back a little bit more, and I think it's the pick I'm going to have to go for. I'm going to take Luka Doncic. I think he's got a point to prove. We've talked about a little bit here. That all kind of silence some of the haters that I was getting on Dallas and Luka Doncic and all those kind of things. We talked about it last time on this pod. I don't think he's a championship winner. I don't think he brings the best out of some a lot of players, but he is a fantasy pig. So I don't love his free throw percentage, but that's something I can look at with a 74%, but I can work around that with the 32 points, eight and a half uh, rebounds, eight assists, 1.4 steals, 50% steal from field goal. I can work around that. So I'm going to take Luka Doncic with my first pick. Yeah, I really like it. Um, look, in there in the rankings, he, he would, would have been right up there anyway. Um, I suppose when I draft Luka Doncic in leagues, I start to think about, you know, his free throw percentage probably isn't at its best um, and you don't get too many blocks there. But, um, yeah, um, with on ESPN, Luka Doncic is a point guard. Just um, so there is your point guard out off the board. So, yeah, so you've only got a point guard in your in your reserves now. So we move down then. So it's my pick next if we're going to work a little bit as a snake, I assume. So, we're so, now pushing... so it's going to be someone between 21 to 40. So if we have a really quick look, just to give everyone who's listening along who we're sort of looking at so they can play along without having to have fantasy sport pros up, I'll go really quickly. We're talking Kyrie Irving, uh, Pascal Siakam, Deontay Murray, Bam Adebayo, DeRozan, Cunningham, Gobert, Leonard, Vucevic, uh, Butler, Garland, Mitchell, Van Vliet, Zion, Scotty Barnes, Jalen Brown, Mobley, Beal, Holiday, and Zach Levine. For me, this is one of those moments where I go, unless there's someone jumping off the board, I'm not going to take Kyrie. If I had, if I had someone like Embiid, I might have started looking at Kyrie from this list. I think he's going to break out and have another big year. Um, for me, it's going to be who do I want to go? I'm either going to go. I want one of the big. I want one of the big boys, and I'm feeling good about the big boys. I don't like what's going on with Pascal Siakam at the moment. The whole play with Toronto. I want that sort of looking like. I am going to take Bam at a bio for me is who's going to be my pick. Um, that's the one who I'm going to go for. I think he sits quite well next to. Um, I think he sits quite well next to uh, Luca, um, and I think he still just gives me a little bit of everything, which is kind of what I'm working with at the moment. Um, is that little bit of everything approach? So, yep, Bam out of bio for me, mate. Yeah, cool, and I like that. He does get a few out of position steals and assists. Um, still shoots at a really high field goal percentage. Um, not a elite free throw shooter, but in and around that 80% and still still 20 po points per game. You can definitely cop his two and a half uh, turnovers a game when uh, when Luca's got a lot more than that anyway. So, But that's the point that you said. The one thing that he sort of drops off on is that free throw percentage. So if we're working off our number one pick being Luca, that's now that one pick that I can start to, start to put aside is probably free throws. Free throws is nearly off the table completely for me now. Now I, I told you that um that I was I suppose looking to get a little spicy with some of these picks. Um and let me just check to make sure that this guy is in our ADP range. Yes, I am going to take Kate Cunningham from the Detroit Pistons with my second pick. 
So I'm going to solidify up that, um, I suppose, that second. Um, you've got point guard and center, uh, very similar to you as well. Um, from the point guard position, he gets some out of position stats. Still shoots. I've kept my field, my free throw percentage really high. Probably sitting at eighty four percent between the two of them. Um, field goal percentage has taken a little bit of a hit there, but he gets six rebounds a game, six assists per game. Uh, still gets nearly a steal and twenty points per game. Now that's on some previous stats there, and I expect him to come forward leaps and bounds with the stage of the is, and hopefully Detroit take a step in the right direction. It's a good pick. I don't mind it. It's a good pick. Uh, it's an interesting pick. I think it's uh, with everyone else that was sitting there. He wasn't the one that I was going to go for. But again, we've started with two very different first round picks. So it makes sense for where you're going for your next round. You got the next one, mate. Picks 40 yep. to 60. And I'm having a look at it and I am going to pivot because there is a gentleman that I did not expect to be here. And that is Shea Gilgis Alexander. Play the sound effect, mate. This is my block. <sighs> Boom shakalaka. Wait, wait, wait. Like my wife always says, not tonight. Like my wife always says, not tonight. Like. Yeah, look, I understand it. This is actually absolutely hitting it out of the park. And now I understand the 41 to 60 message you sent me earlier. Because I actually. Yeah, a little heads up. I gave, mate, <laughs> my whole game plan, the only game plan I had for this was get the first pick, take Jokic, you block him out. And then when this round comes, for this guy's ADP to be there is outrageous based on the numbers he put up last year. Yep. Yeah. No, I understand. And now I'm going to have to pivot. Um, I'm okay with it uh, because straight up, I am going to take Desmond Bain from the Memphis Grizzlies. It's a nice pick. A nice give pick. me a second. I'm just going to add him um, and I suppose give a bit of background to what I've done here. Um so now when I have a look at my stats, I've added another guy that scores above 20 points per game. So I'm keeping that ticking along. Still gets a steal a game. So you know what? Um, between all these guys, I'm still plugging away at close to a steal a game. Um, still gets, you know, four and a half assists, five rebounds out of position. But where he really excels is bumps up my free throw percentage, gets almost three points per game, and still shoots at the 47% clip. Um, I'm not sure whether he loses some of those percentages because I think his usage will go up with Jar Morant out, um, but I'm still happy at that point in the draft to be taking Desmond Bain. I sort of expect him to be taken in the late 20s during proper drafts next uh, later on in the year. Yeah, it's a good pick and it's a little fan favourite for you. So he sits there nicely into your side. Um, I'm having a look now. So for me, it's an interesting pick. I think there's a couple and, and we can start obviously talking about a few more names that are in there. Uh, what does Capoz do now that he's at Boston? Um, Julius Randall, I think is a very big pickup for, for New York. I think he might slot into my side nicely. Torres Maxey, Josh Giddy, uh, Miles Turner's there. Uh, Jay Bell's obviously had a big year. Jared Allen's sitting in there. There's lots of good names still sitting there. Jalen Brunson um, is sitting in there. And so is Brandon Ingram and De'Aaron Fox. For me... To fit my side, I'm actually going to go after, and this might be a little bit controversial as well. I'm going to go with um, Julius Randle. And I'll tell you why. Julius Randle slots into my team with what I'm looking at right now. I slot in another guy who's going 25 and 10. Um, he had sort of four assists. His free throws are a little bit at that 75% range, which isn't horrendous, but it's not what I'm looking at at the moment. He still puts up, he puts up, he put up 2.83 pointers last year as well. So at that power forward position. Now, That's made. Yeah. Yep. So for that power forward position for me, it's, um, yeah, I think he actually slots in well. It was going to be between him and Brandon Ingram with me looking over the names. But after looking at the stats for me, as much as I don't like the guy, it's about winning competitions. So Julius Randle is going to slot in for me. Yeah, cool. So uh, just give us a, a recap as to where you're at with the people, the first three that you've selected and what positions you'll need to fill up into 100 and then we'll start going to our bench. Yep, so I've got Luka Doncic sitting at my point guard position, Julius Randle's at the power forward and Bam Adebayo is sitting at the centre. So you'll need a shooting guard and a small forward. So I've Correct. got McKay Cunningham at point guard, Desmond Bain at shooting guard, and Joel Embiid at centre. So I will be looking at a small forward and a power forward, and then we lead into our um, into our bench positions after that. Uh, it's your pick again, mate. 
So we start looking at 61 to 80 now. And this is when, I mean, you're big on this. This is when we start getting to the areas where you got to start finding the players. Everybody talks about your one and your two. But for me, this is where you got to start making some moves <coughs> and hope somebody steps up from last year's. Um, I mean, Ben Simmons is a really interesting one, especially when I don't care about free throws, but I don't think he's going to do too much. Um, ooh, this is a tough call, actually. There's a couple that are jumping off the page at me that I don't want to actually give to you just yet, but... Uh, let's have a look. Oof. There's a couple jumping off the page for me that I actually can't take, having already taken my point guard and shooting guard. So, The question for me is, um, you have ESPN in front of you. Jordan Poole, is he just PG or is he PGSG? Let me have a look for you. He is a I'm, shooting guard on I'm ESPN. Looking at, I'm, I'm looking at Jordan Poole to have a breakout year, especially um, at his new club. Uh, Michael Porter Jr., I know he just is a solid performer and he knows his role. Uh, OG Ananobi is another one who I really like as well. And I don't mind Devin Vassil. Um, I think he'll go all right. But for me, I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to I'm gonna just oh, – oh. I'm going to take a chance on Jordan Poole is who I'm going to go for at that shooting guard position. Yep. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I think I, I think it's hard to look at his stats last year and then sort of put to reason why. I think for me now, it's all about opportunity for him. Um, and I think he's got a point to prove. The, the, the games that I watched and the things that I saw, I, I know why Golden State has made the move that they have, but this is still a guy who's clearly learnt a lot from one of the greatest players of this generation who's changing the game. He has Andrew the Wiggins. ability to – he has the – yeah, Andrew Wiggins. Um, he has the great – he has the ability to score off his dribble – um, he has the ability to, you know, bring his new teammates into the game. I think he has a really big point to prove. And with him sitting there right now, he slots into that SG for me. And I'll, uh, I'll be happy with that. So when you have a look at your team, um, surely you're starting to think, wait, well, fuck it. I'm going to have to start tanking some, some field goal percentage. Um, I'm going to be good for points. There's going to be a lot of points there. And, um, yeah probably start to tank turnovers because I think Jordan Poole will turn yep. the ball over a lot in the coming year as well with as Luka Doncic. Yeah, there's no doubt now with my small forward and, and look, there's some players on the <coughs> board and I'm not, there's some big part of me there that that if I was being really strategic, like a Michael Porter Jr., an OG Ananobi, a Devin Vassell probably actually slots into this side bigger uh, or better, I should say. But I think I just want to take – I'd take a chance on Jordan Poole at this point just because I think he could go ballistic with some threes. I've got some three-point shooters. So threes are looking good for me. Points are looking good for me. I think Bam and Randall give me enough in the rebound ranks. So I'm definitely looking for a small forward in the next lot without actually looking ahead that's going to shoot the three um, at a good clip um, and possibly hopefully get me a, a couple of boards as well and just keep the points at a nice as – a, as a nice spot. Yeah, cool. I – um. Yeah, I'm really glad that you let this one slide to me. I've uh, I've sat here pretty quietly here, and I'm going to take the 17th best player from last year. At oh, crap. Last year, he was at the draft position of 71, and I'm going to take Mikal Bridges. So Mikal Bridges is coming into my team as my small forward. Um, he keeps all my percentages up, um, still happens to score two three-pointers a game, you know, four rebounds, three assists, 20 points. Keeps, he's actually my best when it comes to turnovers. 89% free throw shooter. And just a guy that I'm happy to take in my team. So um, I was really disappointed that I couldn't take Jordan Poole because I think the upside of him becoming a sort of top 40 player is too juicy not to take in that 61 to 80 range in the game that we're playing today. But, um, but yeah, the... The not even an upside pick, just uh, just a complimentary piece to my team is Mikel Bridges. Look, I think it's a really good pick. I like where you've gone with the the number seventeen, just to give everyone a little bit of fun. I know people like looking at different websites to give different rankings. One that I really love is um, hashtag Basketball, which sort of gives you a bit of a, a rating system of these players when you put them in there. Um, Mikel sits at about thirty nine on that, so they've actually got him yep. quite low for his position when it comes to field goal. Although it's not horrendous at forty six. 47%. His, uh, his free throws is nice and high. The two uh, three-pointers per game, 20 points. Um, yeah, so he sits 39th on that, but at this draft, that's um, that's pretty good. It's a nice pickup. 
Yep, cool. So now we're looking at 81 to 100, Rob. Um, I have to take a power forward. So mm-hmm. I'm going to skim over some of the other guys, and I'm going to let you know some of the guys that I can take. That's Sadiq Bay, Kyle Kuzma, Wendell Carter Jr., Keegan Murray, Draymond Green, Laurie Markinen, Jeremy Grant, RJ Oh, no, I can't take RJ Barrett. Bobby Portis Jr., Robert Williams the third, and Brandon Clark, PJ Washington, and Al Horford. So plenty of power forwards in that range. Um, today, I am going to take Laurie Markkinen. No brainer. No, oh, mate, yeah. this toss of the coin has been phenomenal for you. So you've played it very well. Uh, that's a no brainer pick. It's a no brainer pick. And go ahead and tell everyone why. He had a huge year. Three threes a game, still manages to shoot at 50%. Um, 87% from the line, 25 points a game. Um, still jags, you know, eight and a half rebounds. Um, not very good in blocks, steals, and assists. Sometimes you can sort of get those uh, steals and blocks in this position. But at less than 1.9 turnovers a game, my starting five is looking very, very juicy. And I'm an extremely happy man. Yeah, no, it's a really, it's a really good pick. I think if I'm, yeah, it was a no-brainer for me. Looking through that list, he's also, I think he's pretty much, I think he's got the SFPF as well. So I would have grabbed him at SF uh, for sure yep. um, if that was an option to me. Um, <coughs> mate, you know what? Like, look, going off the things we've talked about, field goal percentage, turnovers not being a big deal. Um, I still want to get that someone who shoots a three, um, puts up some points boards there's one name standing out to me but i just i'm just doing a quick scan as well i know this doesn't make for great listening as people are just sort of scanning along but for me and you might need to just double check the position for him i think i'm gonna have to take i think i'm gonna have to take and i just want to have a quick look but i can come back to it anyway i think i'm gonna have to take jeremy grant um from yep Portland. yep powerful um, you're all good getting, uh, small forward, uh, SF, powerful, SF, 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 small forward powerful yep beautiful like so having a look at what he does look Again, it's an interesting one. Um, I was just sort of looking through his numbers sort of popped up for me here. He sits at 62 on hashtag basketball. Uh, Field goal percentage, not the best, sort of 48. He shoots at 81 from free throws, 2.33s. Still gets me those 20 points. So for points for me at the moment, I'm sitting nice and high. Rebounds at four and a half, ain't bad. Um, His turnovers actually aren't horrendous. He even averages nearly a block a game as well, which isn't too bad. So for me, sitting with uh, Luca. Uh, Jordan Poole, uh, Jeremy Grant, uh, Julius Randall, and Bam Adebayo. I'm pretty happy with – I can see what I'm building here as I move on through the draft. Yeah. So um, I think that your next pick is is your comeback pick. I reckon this is the pick that makes or breaks your team. So um, have, a, which have makes a bit of a wonder look. What, which makes me wonder who am I missing? <laughs> have it. Have a bit of a look and um, and have a think. Um, I'm just going to give a recap of my team while you're having a look at that, man. Um, I've right. got Kate Cunningham, Desmond Bain, Mikel Bridges, Laurie Markinen, and Joel Embiid. And when you're looking at five guys only taking in the top 500, um, I think I am extremely well-rounded there. It's actually a bit crazy to think that Cade Cunningham was my second pick when he might be my fifth best player out of those five players. So, um, you all, you all set up with your next pick, mate? There's there's two that I like the look of. I think one jumps off the page at me. I think one jumps off the page at me. I, yeah. Oh, there's two that jump off the page at me. I think I'm going to have to talk, go. Talk us, talk us through your, your decision-making. I'll talk you through it. So the names that are on there, Malcolm Brogdon, Trey Jones, Herbert Jones, Cole Lowry. Um, yeah, the, there's the, the two names that jump off at me are like you've got John Wall in there, Gordon Hayward. But the name that jumps off at me is, is Jaron Jackson Jr. Um, and, you know, James Wiseman's going to a new role. But we talked about how many centers are sitting there now at, a new, at his new team. Um, for me, I think it's a no-brainer. You'll know it better than me, but it's surely got to be Triple J. I'm taking Triple yep. J. Um, I'm trying to actually just pull up a few of these numbers here. I did actually pull it up before because when I did do a little bit of a um, a scan, oh, it's funny, it's actually still sitting in my history there. Um, I did do a bit of a scan. I was intrigued to see where um, his numbers were. Right. And, so um, to get 
to honestly, to get the defensive player of the year at this point in this format that we've put together is crazy. And he's only there. Like, overall, he was the 29th best player, and that's taking in the fact that they eased him into it. During yeah. the last month of the year, he was actually the 14th best player in the comp. Um, with those three blocks per game and still shooting 50% and 1.63s with uh, 78% free throw percentage, um, that's an absolute steal, and I have him in my top 30 this year. Talk to me about his rebound numbers. So when I looked him up earlier, that was the one that sort of jumped off. It, it surprised me that his rebound numbers were quite low. Um, so for a guy that, if I've got it right here, 18, 18 points, only 6.8 rebounds per game. The three blocks is massive. The steal, you're taking all that. <coughs> what what kind of what's the definition of why or what's the reasoning around why he's only averaging those seven boards as a as a grizzly man i'm sure you've watched plenty of because, the games because he shoots 1.6 because he makes 1.63s a game and probably takes a lot more than that uh he spaces the floor while stephen adams holds up the um i suppose the middle um he is a really good three point shooter from his, for his size so I suppose he expands a lot of energy, basically gets no offensive rebounds. They would all be defensive rebounds that he spends off uh, of trying to shot, uh, block some shots. Um, his numbers get, I suppose, deflated a little bit by the fact that he spends a lot of time in foul trouble, um, which yep. I hope that they try and address this year. Yep. No, happy with that. I'll take that one. Yeah, no, saw that one coming. Um, so I am going to have a little bit of a look into the 120, 101 range. I won't be taking Malcolm Brogdon. Um, there's Trey Jones, there's Herb Jones, there's Kyle Lowry, there's Dinwiddie Dollars, there's uh, Zubak, Josh Hart, Harry Barnes, Hayward, Jalen Smith, Jabari Smith Jr., John Wall, Dylan Brooks, Mike Conley. I actually thought Mike Conley was going to be the one that I would take here, but I'm mm. going to chase some upside, and I'm going to add Trey Jones. Um, look, to me, he is the clear point guard in San Antonio. San Antonio is going to get a lot better this year. He's going to have a lot better people to pass it to, and he's going to be a guy that I look to get in that late, uh, probably up to 100 range. Um, still really good numbers. Like he is Tyus Jones' brother, let's remember. Um, shoots the free throw percent, free throws really good. Still gets 6.6 6 assists per game. I probably don't need to worry about assists too much between having Cade and, and Trey and having just, you know, Joel Embiid getting four a game and Desi Bain getting four a game. Um, I'm pretty happy to take Trey Jones there. Yeah, I don't mind it. He's, he's a, it's an interesting one. I know you're a big, you're a big Conley fan. So I was surprised. I thought you might be looking at like a Conley. Um, yeah, yeah, we're, we're looking at a sign, a sign Conley jersey, uh, sign Conley uh, basketball right behind me there. Um, no so yeah, that was that was a big one. Going with my head, not my heart. It's signed by Mark Gasol <laughs> and Mike Conley. So it's a nice ball, mate. I've uh, I've got to get a few for the office actually. So no, nah, looks good. Looks good. We move on. We're down to – so to give everyone a, an idea, because we didn't say this. So our three bench players, we did agree that one had to be guard and one had to be forward centre, and then the third can be anything, yeah? I actually thought that we were going to go guard, forward, and centre in, cool. the, in the last iteration. Right. You're right. cool with that? I'm, I'm yeah, happy cool. with that. Yep. We're, Is Triple we'll J, make that up. Both? Is Triple J PF centre? So just a Yeah, yeah, you, you can slot him into where you want. You can slot yeah. him into where you want there. All right, you're first up, mate. One twenty to one twenty-one to one forty. So to let you know what I'm thinking of, I really like Miles Bridges. I don't like him as a bloke, but I like him as a basketball player. And Onyeka Okongwu, even Malik Beasley with his move to Milwaukee this year, um, I can get some consistency out of Aaron Gordon. Um, I really like all those guys. But at centre, I'm going to take Brooke Lopez. Ooh. Yeah, really like the pick of Brooke Lopez. Um, as I add him into my lineup, I might be giving away a lot of rebounds because he's similar sort of that, to that Triple J, um, sort of scores, I'll uh, get 6.7 rebounds. But he does get 15 points per game and does sort of solidify those three pointers as well as getting two and a half blocks. So um, I really like the blocks. I don't think that very often you get blocks this late in a draft. 
So yeah, uh, that leaves me with small forward and power forward for my last pick, which will be after your next two. So I have to give a shout out because my boy uh, Alex Caruso is sitting in this bunch, but this is a competition. I'm a competitive person, so I don't think he's the right pick based on a lot of the names that you just mentioned there as well. So uh, I'm going to leave him sitting there, sadly. Um, he's not the same if he's not in a purple and gold jersey. Um, look, I in the in the space of competition, I'm going to take Miles Bridges. Again, we're not here to talk about who people are as human beings. We're here to win a fantasy competition. So for me, Miles Bridges is the pick. He slots in where I need him to be. Um, I'll use him as that forward on my bench. I'll move Triple J to the centre on my bench. Um, again, that points factor and the things that I'm looking on in that team, he just slots in for what I'm using. So, yeah, I think. And there's not uh, too many guys in this range apart from Jaron Jackson Jr. and Miles Bridges that sort of have that immense upside. So yeah. at times in the 2021 season, he was a top 30 player. And yep. we're going deep into the draft. Of course, you know, we're not expecting to draft everybody in ADPs. But this could be a very similar sort of draft if you're going into a competition with a lot of blokes that are just playing their first NBA draft. They're going to be going off the numbers from the previous year. So it could actually be relevant to you. Yeah, I, I like it. As you said, there's a big upside there. You know he's going to get the minutes. You know what he can do. <laughs> Um, so for me, when you just look at those names, there's a lot of solid names in that group. It's an interesting bunch, that one. And, and, and you, you could, you could pick a heap of them to be totally honest and know what you're going to get from them. For me, he just gives me that upside. So yeah, happy with that pick. Now so we're I get the, on the 141 to the 160 range. Oof. No, I get the last one. You get the next one and then you have, yeah. So you get the first one in the last All round. Right. All right, so, so this is um, you. So I'm just going to rattle. So I'll let you ever think about it, but I'm just yeah. going to rattle off some of the numbers. We've got Cameron Johnson. We've got Isaiah Jackson. We've got Dorian Finney-Smith. We've got Lonzo Ball. We've got the Red Rocket Kevin Herter, Red Velvet to his friends, Dennis Schroeder, Caris LeBert, Lugens Dort, Derek White, Bogdan Bogdanovich, Jonathan Isaac, Jaden McDaniels, Rashawn Holmes, uh, Bob Covington, Victor Oladipo, Kevon Looney, Seth Curry, PJ Tucker, Evan Fournier, and Jay Crowder. What are you thinking there, Robbie? I have to pick a guard, so i got no choice here. <coughs> um, I have to pick a guard. So the ones that sort of stand out to me, I mean, I don't mind Kevin Huerta, um, get a bit of threes, Lonzo Ball, I think. we've got. I'm assuming we're putting a line through him on the assumption that he's not playing. Like, where's your yep. head at there? Yeah. No, 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 not touching him. Um, yeah. If there becomes news that he is coming out, I will be the first to pick him up. But, yeah, realistically, <laughs> he's not going to play. Yeah. I, the Derek White one's an interesting for me. I, I think, do we land on the fact that he's – Do we? is he going to be the starting point guard? Like, where does Yeah, where does yeah, especially so, – so Brog isn't playing. So Brog's injured. Derek White, I think, will play a lot of minutes. He did play about 28 minutes per game last year, and I probably see him playing up and around that 33. And I think for me, that's why I'm probably going to take him. I think that's the pick for me, just for minutes to start with. I think we're right at the end of a draft. If, if your last pick in a draft is someone who's possibly going to be a starter and get good minutes – um, whatever numbers he kind of produces, you'll sort of go with it. Um, I had a look up before. Look, I don't mind, you know, Schroeder going to Toronto and stuff like that as well. But I kind of like the upside of the fact that he's going to start. I think it slots in nicely to what I'm looking for as well, just from a little bit of consistency right now. Let the other players play and um, and go from there. Uh, Bogdanovich sort of stood out a little bit. Schroeder, Herder. But I'm not. it's not like I'm dying to have to have threes is my point. So for me, it's going to be Derek White from a consistency standpoint. Excellent. So that leaves me with the last pick in the draft. And uh, it come down to two guys for me. Um, and it was sort of deciding whether I was going to tank, whether I was going to really go hard after those threes and sort of let my field goal percentage drop or whether I was going to, uh, you know, probably just decide that I'm going to fade off free throws a little bit and solidify my rebounds. Um, I'm going to take Cameron Johnson. I feel, um, I feel that from a mile away. The description, it was just playing, we were just playing backwards questions there, mate, and exactly where we were going. 
Yeah, and if you look at his averages and it's got a 15 points per game, uh, played 25 minutes a night, I start to look at his last 20 games and he averaged over 30 minutes a, uh, a night, um, really good turnover-wise. Um, you know, probably scores in closer to that 18, 19 points per game. Still gets four rebounds. Not going to help me much on the assist, but where he is going to help me is um, is those two and a half three pointers made and still keeping that 84% free throw percentage. That's a good pick. I, I, once I saw Cam Johnson, I think it's a handy pick at this point. Obviously, it'll be interesting to see where he lands in ADPs moving forward. My, uh, the question I want to ask you, and it is a question without warning, is there anyone lower that you would have taken? So obviously we, we told ourselves to stay in this realm and what we did. Is there anyone that sort of jumps off the plate um, that says, look, these are where people should be picked? I'm sure you're getting ready for your drafts in the uh, the 42 different leagues that you're playing. Like who's that massive sleeper that's sitting there late that, uh, that you're hoping sits to a particular round and then you're going to jump on them with a smile? Tyus Jones. Um, last year he was he was taken in and around that eight 187, uh, 181 on Yahoo and lower on ESPN. Uh, again, much like how you explained the situation with Jordan Poole, he's going to come into Washington being, I suppose, the man or I suppose the the starting point guard, which he's never been, which he hasn't really been. They sort of played. I suppose when he was in Minnesota, they played Zach Levine, that sort of ball-playing role, and he's been playing in behind Ja Morant. In my opinion, he was the best backup point guard uh, throughout last year, um, and he's the guy that stands out to me. I, I agree with your statement, absolutely. He's that one that when you kind of, if you had him in your team, and especially on WA time, you're waking up early to see if he's actually the starter or if someone's injured because every time he started, his numbers were off the chart, like good numbers, like really good numbers. You knew you were going to get the assist. You knew what you were going to get with him. So, yeah, good call. So what so at what round then is he the point that you're sort of taking him and, and feel like you've had a win? What's par? Um, like what's par and then what's getting a win? So I'm, so I'm not going to go what round. I would be happy to take him anywhere after – because I don't know what pick I've got. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to be happy to take him after 80th. Yep. Um, but I probably would be happier taking him closer to 100. But, like, it's going to depend on what pick I've got. That's why you're the Matrix, mate. Love it. Love it. Um, I'll, reach, I'll reach for Tyus Jones this year. All right, so we're going through our teams. Where are we at? So, we so let's just let's just let people know what we're going to do. So I'm gonna we're gonna pop into the Insight Fantasy Sports Twitter page, and we are going to do a poll between the two of us in the comments. Both the Super Coach Hawk and um and the Super Coach Matrix or the Matrix in this case is going to I suppose say our teams. You're going to be able to vote for Team A and Team B, whoever team that you think is going to have the better fantasy year. Uh, leading into next year. And, um, yeah, just a bit of a competition between me and Rob and a bit of community involvement. So rattle off your team, Rob. So starting five is Luka Doncic, Jordan Poole, Jeremy Grant, Julius Randle, and Bam Adebayo. And then on the bench as my guard, I've got Derek White. Uh, as my forward is Miles Bridges. And as my centre is uh, Triple J. Nice. I'll... I'll rattle through my team. Give me a second. At point guard, I have Cade Cunningham. At shooting guard, I have Desmond Bain from my Memphis Grizzlies. I've got <laughs> Mikael Bridges. I have Laurie Markkinen. I have Joel Embiid. I have Trey Jones coming off the bench. I have Cameron Johnson filling that forward spot and Brooke Lopez in the centre. And just a reminder, I have blocked Rob from taking Nikola Jokic and you have blocked me from taking Shea Gilgis-Alexander. Isn't it crazy to think how um, different your team would look? So if I get like a Dodgic first round, I could just change it. If I get, a, sorry, a um, Jokic first round, it changes the whole dynamic of the team. It's crazy. You can't you can't even fathom what it would look like. But, um, mate, it's good fun. I'm not going to lie. I think I've got you covered just quietly. I'm quite impressed by myself. Yeah, cool. I'm excited on Twitter. I take some spicy picks and um, and I suppose some upside picks, um, which I I actually sort of expected your team to uh, to take mine in it. And I think Jaron Jackson Jr. there in that late round might be the difference. 
Yeah, I think that's a handy pick. I, I, I liked um, a few of yours. A few of yours were really handy. I think you can see there's reason and uh, method behind why we've picked each player. It's based on the team. It's not about just taking the best player on the board. Look, I've probably got two players there that I don't even really enjoy watching in Julius Randle and Jeremy Grant, but it fits what I need for a bit of a fantasy win. Um, even Jordan Poole, to be totally honest, I was pretty happy to see him get smacked in the face being a little bastard. But um, but look, this is fun. And they'll probably, if, if, if this was my team, the beautiful thing about fantasy sport is they'll probably start to become some of my favourite players throughout the season because you definitely get behind your players and have a watch. But, mate, fantastic idea by yourself to jump on and have a bit of fun, have a bit of games. I think these are the things that people want to listen to and, and learn from. Um, I'm going to be calling mum and all her lovely uh, Lady Baker friends to just get on and vote. And uh, where can we guide them to? Where's the vote going to be, mate? Where do we, uh, where do we guide be, them? It's, it's going to be on our Insight Fantasy Sports Twitter page. Um, and, um, yeah, we'll, we'll have some comments in there. Um, yeah, throw some smack around. Let us know who you think are the better teams. And, um, yeah, shout out to the Standard Squeeze. Beautiful. Till next time. Love it, mate. Love your work. Cheerio. Bye.